Investigation of Curves, Section 3, Limiting Behaviour, Video 4, Cusp. We looked at cusps briefly in Section 1 and mentioned what they look like. Now we're going to define them formally and see how to demonstrate that a point is in fact a cusp. So a curve has a cusp at a point where two branches meet if the curve is defined at that point and if the gradient of the tangent tends to the same limit as the point is approached from either side. So we might have something on our curve that looks a little bit like this. You can see that as the gradient changes, there's a discontinuity in the gradient at this point. It doesn't change smoothly. But what we can do is we can find the gradient along each branch, so coming from above this cusp, and find what limit the gradient tends to, and then the same going below along this branch. So let's have a look at an example and see how this would work in practice. Show that the curve defined parametrically x, cubed, x equals t cubed, y equals t squared has a cusp. Let's have a look in GeoGebra first of all. So I'm going to plot my equations parametrically. So I've got that x is t cubed and y is t squared. And it looks as if there is a cusp at the origin. So to prove it's a cusp, first of all, I need to show that the origin is actually on my curve. And then I need to find out that the gradient as I tend to zero from above is the same as the limit in the gradient as I tend to zero from below. Well, I can tell that the origin is in fact on my curve because x is t cubed and y is t squared. So when t equals 0, I'll have that x equals 0 and y is 0. So 0, 0 is defined as a point on the curve. Let's open up the computer algebra system so I can see what's happening with the gradient. So first of all, I need to put in my expressions for x is t cubed and y is... That should be t squared there. And now I want to find the derivative. So I find dx by dt, first of all, the derivative of expression 1. And dy by dt, the derivative of expression 2. And then to find dy by dx, I divide those. So I'm going to divide expression 4 by expression 3. And that gives me dy by dx is 2 over 3t. So this gives me some insight into why strange things are happening when t equals 0. Now to prove that it is in fact a cusp, I need to prove that as I approach t equals 0 from above, and as I approach t equals 0 from below, I get the same gradient. So I need to use the limit above and the limit below function. So the limit above of expression 5 as t approaches 0, I get the answer infinity. And then when I do the limit below as expression 5 for t approaching 0, and this time I get minus infinity. Now you might be a little bit concerned that we've got a different gradient. We've got infinity here and we've got minus infinity here. But we're all right because a gradient of infinity is a vertical line and a gradient of minus infinity is also a vertical line. So this is showing me that as I approach this cusp from either side, the gradient is vertical. Let's have a look at how we'll write this up. So what did we do in the computer algebra system? First of all, we worked out that dx by dt was equal 3t squared, and dy by dt was equal 2t. And then we divided one by the other to get dy by dx equals 2 over 3t. Next, we checked that 0, 0 was in fact a point on the curve. So at t equals 0, we had that x equals 0, y equals 0. So 0, 0 is a point 
on the curve. And then we thought about the gradient at 0, 0. So this was undefined. So we looked at the limit. So first of all, we did the limit as t tends to 0 from above of 2 over 3t. And we put that into our computer algebra system and got the answer infinity. And then we put in the limit as t tends to 0 from below of 2 over 3t. And we got the answer minus infinity. Hence, the gradient tends to the same limit So we have that 0, 0 is a cusp. In this video, you've learned how to show that a point on a curve is a cusp.